I understand that too. Unfortunately also athletes, scientists and other experts always proceed from a coincidence which they call only an arbitrary and not lawful event, which results in the way that a coincidence of two things of course, that is to say that two things on it that is to say coincide and result in a so-called coincidence which according to their explanation is not controlled lawfully or predetermined. So chance is usually defined as something that is not foreseen, was not intended, or happens unexpectedly. Furthermore, chance also has something to do with when things fall to a person, or something falls to someone, such as a piece of cake that is divided among several people, whereby each person falls to a piece, resulting in a fall to chance. Among the mystics of the 14th century, chance was explained as externally added following Latin accidents, 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 accidents. In this sense, it is assumed with regard to chance, which arises without any discernible reason, that so-called chance would in truth be nothing other than an expression of a divine or other higher will, which in turn would mean that it would be predestined to be leading and guiding and would thus have an effect on the world. So, in this sense, chance predestination would be a development of life which would be divine from the beginning or otherwise predestined by a higher power, and consequently the chance events experienced by man as faithful would also be controlled in this way. However, when reality and its truth are considered and analyzed, there is nothing to suggest that everything or even the smallest thing is arranged and controlled by a divine or other higher purposeful will. On the contrary, reality and its truth show that in the current existence and life of man himself continuously determines everything himself, sets the causes for everything and lets it become reality through his own conscious will which he is able to use, steer and use all by himself. The fundamental fact that everything in relation to the entire knowledge of nature is based on creative natural laws shows that all world affairs are governed by laws and short in nature. So everything has its creative natural laws and commandments, which also determine that causes and effects must be created, also by man, who, however, can only do this because he has his own free will over which he can determine himself. This also clearly states that in nature no arbitrary acts can determine what happens, but that behind everything that man erroneously regards not as a coincidence but as coincidence, there is a certain will or even a creative strategic regularity. And what is the case and works in free nature is also the case with humans, which means that they themselves deliberately determine what they do or do not do, or which causes they set and bring to effect or simply do not bring about. Exactly this, however, demands of man that he has his own free will over which he himself determines and in which no deity and no other higher power can intervene even with a tiny yuta, but only man himself. This also answers the question why each person is so different from the others in every respect. This also means that man is not responsible for any coincidence, but only for coincidences which he creates by his own free will, therefore he controls everything by the laws of his free will, which means that he is through and through of a creature independent of coincidences or other preconditions concerning a god or another higher power. So ultimately he does not have to bow to the will of a god or any other higher power or any laws restricting him in his own will or to a coincidence or divine or any other higher preordination by which he would be controlled in relation to his destiny. Basically, the reason for the difference in every respect lies in the fact that man has free will so that he can conceive, handle, control and put everything into action of his own accord. So people are free to decide how they want to experience it every day and feel a responsibility for what they do. And just as the free will of one's own belongs to man, so also the freedom of one's own will belongs inseparably to being human. This also does not change the fact that man is classified in the creative natural laws and commandments which he is to follow fundamentally but also again according to his own decision and free will whether he wants to do this or not, 
because the creative natural laws and commandments do not exert any compulsion, but let man freely decide what he wants to do and what not. Consequently it is also clear in this regard that he can do and leave what he wants according to his own free will. So the question does not arise how the principle of free will can be reconciled with the principle of creative natural regularity, because both the free will of man can bring about something, and at the same time the creative natural laws and commandments, consequently the one does not exclude the other.